Hello and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. Our God is good. He is good all of the time and He is worthy to be praised. He's the Most High God. El Elyon El Che. He is the living God. And He loves us with so much love. And he, he is love, right? That's what it says in 1 John chapter 4. That God is love. And, and if we love, if we are, if, if we are in Him, and His love is abiding on us and being poured out into our hearts, then we're going to love one another the way Christ has loved us. This unconditional love, where we hold no faults, no griefs, we carry no sorrows, we are not burdened down and heavy, heavy laden anymore. We're coming boldly before the throne of God, the throne of Christ, where, where Jesus has given us access to come boldly into this throne room where we can find grace and help when we need it. We lay everything out before the living God. We pour out our hearts before Him, as David was saying in the Psalms, and we allow the living God to sanctify us in the word of truth. How does he do that? He speaks to us in the spirit. His spirit is speaking to our spirits. And we always come to the word and we're eating it, we're drinking it, we're, we're, we're looking for what he has to say today, to, today. And we're allowing that word to come into our hearts and sanctify us. The, the, the way that the Father keeps us from evil is by sanctifying us with the Word of God, the, the, the truth. The truth is the reality of God. He is the living God. And to see Him as He is in the Spirit, in our hearts, in the Spirit. It, that see, while we're in this earth, we see Him in the Spirit, in our hearts. And we know that He is. Again, I love Hebrews chapter 11, the faith chapter where he's saying that, you know, without faith it's impossible to please him. You know, the reason that Enoch was taken up, he was, he was taken up and he wasn't found was because he was a friend with God. He had a relationship with him. He believed that God is. I won't use the word was because God is living. He's, he's right here right now today. And he wants us to come to him and sit down with him, learn of him. Jesus has opened his arms wide open for us. We come through this son who is, who is the word. What did, what did the Lord say now? What did the word say? The word says that Jesus, he is the word that became flesh. This is the God who is our salvation. That's what the name means anyway. Christ is the anointed one, the son of the living God. He was sent by the, by, he comes into this world to redeem a fallen creation. I mean, he really, really loves what he made. You got to remember this, he, the, the father, the, the God of creation, he reaches into the ground, the dust of the ground, and he forms, he, he shapes a man. And then he blows his breath into our nostrils and we become a living soul, a living nephesh, it says. We are his. He blows his life into us. See, Jesus comes into the scene as a life-giving spirit. And when we say yes to the Lord, I'm skipping around, right? <laughs> when we come into the Lord, when we say yes to Him, we get reignited. We get ignited. See, we, we, we were born into this dead place where we are spiritually blind of everything around us. And this is why you have to have forgiveness for the whole entire world. It lays in wickedness, and it can't help it. It's not 
the world. It's not the people's fault. It's not your neighbor's fault. It's not your mother and father's fault. It's not your auntie's fault. Whatever it is that anybody is into, whatever it is that they were, they have done, they were born spiritually blind into this world the same way that we were. And as we have come into Christ, we have been ignited, lit. We, we come into the knowledge of the one who is the most high God who wants to be in us and with us and to us and through us and wants to have us all for himself but he wants to also glorify himself through us we have become the light of the world because of what Jesus Christ has done for us it wasn't about anything that we did all we did was come because let's see remember what it says in the book of Revelation the spirit and the bride say come I mean this is a open heart kind of thing where we trust in the one we cannot see and we know that he is our hearts are constantly if you really know him your heart is constantly calling out Abba in every situation in every circumstance he is the Lord He's the Lord who heals us. He's the Lord who helps us in everything. If 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 I if I'm off today in my feelings, in my mind, in will and emotions, and I call on the Lord, He helps me. He reminds me of the truth. This is the truth that has set us apart. This is the truth that has made us holy. This is the truth that sanctifies us. The Word is what we are reminded of by the Spirit of God. What did Jesus come and do? Jesus did what none of us could do. He comes into this world of life-giving spirit being sent by God the Father. He, they had an agreement going on with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This Godhead, this Elohim, they had an agreement that they would send the word into the world and that the word would become flesh and save us. The word is what sanctifies us. It sanctifies our heart. It sanctifies our mind. This is Jesus. The God is salvation. He comes into the world and the word does not bow to the God of this world. And by the way, he wasn't always the God of this world. But we have to remember what, G, what Adam did. When we go back to the beginning, we remember that, that, that Adam was given charge, Adam and Eve. They were both called Adam in the beginning, right? They, this woman and this man called Adam, they were given charge over all the world. They were first the gods of this world, small g. They were first the gods of this world. And they gave away. It was given away. Our, our, the authority, we passed it off to the devil. And he took it and he ran with it and see the, the the true nature of sin it all comes from the devil and that nature we 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 inherited the nature of the devil and this is why we needed Jesus to come Jesus the word becomes flesh he comes into the world and he doesn't bow his knee to the God of this world and he in every way stands up for who he is as many times as the, the the Satan tempted him and said if you are the Son of God and as many times as demons came out and and announced you know if you are you no know, they didn't say if you are they, they was proclaiming he is the Most High God and that he, he, they would say things that that said that you are the Son of the Most High God and but they did it's not like they were giving him a blessing or praising his name or even acknowledging that he was they were saying that he was had no authority 
to cast him out. But Jesus kept coming back with the Word of God. Jesus proves to us in every way that the Word is greater than our enemy. The Word is greater than our flesh. The Word is greater than this world. Everything is subject to the Word of God. And don't you love it that it says in, in the Word that that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. This is a good thing. This is a good thing. We've inherited the kingdom of God. And the only way to sit down, and the only way to get what Jesus has given us, I mean, he's given us such a grace that is beyond our imagination and we need to imagine it we need to sit down in this word learn of him bask in the knowledge of god and allow him to to fill us with the knowledge of himself see we're always looking at for how does this happen and we look at other people that are in 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 position in churches and things and and we see them in the pulpit or or, or, or just going back and forth up from their chair to, to the platform and they're speaking. And, and we sit in our chair. And we do nothing. But I'm telling you, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. God gave gifts to men. And that pastor, that teacher, that preacher, whatever they may be in Christ. You have been given that same gift. Maybe not the exact identical gift, but God has gifted you. And the only way to find out and exercise this gift is to sit down in the secret place of the Most High and allow the Spirit of God to talk to you. He speaks to each and every one of us. God has poured out His Spirit into our hearts. He has poured His Spirit out. And we, we grow by the Spirit. The spirit gives birth to spirit. In Romans, it says the flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. Jesus comes, a life-giving spirit, who has uh, baptized us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He's baptized us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. We have been kindled. We have been made alive by the Lord Jesus Christ, if we truly believe that he is the Christ. I mean, these days, right now, we need to really know in our hearts that he is who he is. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are one, and they are here for us, and to us, and through us. And he wants to magnify himself in us, and over us. He wants to show off all around us because he wants all men to be saved. Jesus in John chapter 3 and, and, and 17, he says, I, I've been sent into the world that the world, let me, I have to, I'll go all the way back down on John. Let's find it. And I said, John chapter 3, right? So. Give the pages turning. Six and three. Let's see. And we know God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever believed in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Through him might be saved. <laughs> Jesus is the Word become flesh. And this is the Word that sanctifies our heart and mind. This, when, when the word is allowed to come into our hearts, when we are allowed, when we allow ourselves to sit down in the word and be fed by it, 
we, are, we can say no to evil. This is how you learn to resist the enemy. In James chapter 4, right? James chapter 4, right? And it says, submit yourselves to God. You got to read the whole thing. Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil. Resist the enemy. But see, it's two different sentences. There's one sentence here. It says, uh, submit yourself to God. And then the next sentence says, resist the enemy. You cannot resist the enemy if you have not submitted your heart, your mind, will, and emotions to God. This is not just going to a church service. This is sitting This is sitting in the secret place of the Most High and, and worshiping Him with your whole heart, with all your mind, and with all of your physical body, your mind, will, and emotions, and your strength. It's sitting down and in, when, in, when it's quiet and when there's nobody else up, and it's getting into the Word. He'll pour it into your heart and cleanse you. It, from all of your wrongdoing and give you a right mind and a good understanding. He gives you clarity so that you're not lost. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us where we need help today. Help us to lean not on our own understanding, but in all of our ways, acknowledge you. You are our peace. You are our life. You are our help. And I thank you right now for that in the name of Yeshua. Thank you, Lord Jesus. One more word here in um, Mark chapter 4. It says here, the title of it is from the King James, The Unconscious Growth. And I heard this a long time ago. And I remember paying attention to it because I knew that this is how the Word works inside of us when we put it in. And we can't see how it's growing. We don't know how it's working. But the, the Bible also says don't despise the, the day of small beginnings. You plant the seed. Jesus is the seed. The kingdom's already been put in you. And now we water the seed with the word of God. Look, it says, and he said, this, talking, this Jesus is talking, so is the kingdom of God. As if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up and know, and he knows it not. You don't know how it sprung up. For the earth brings forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that full, uh, that, then the ear, and then after that the full corn of the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he puts in the sickle. He, he sickles it, and it becomes, and it comes. There comes the harvest. That was hard to get out of my mouth. <laughs> But we don't see how it's growing. We don't always know how the Word is working in us when we first sit down to eat it. But when we do, we're watering the seed of our faith. When we first believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that God is, and that He's the Son of God, and we began to walk with Him, there's a lot of things that happened in between that time that would dull all of your senses, that it would cause you to not follow him anymore, or to, like Jesus says in the, the book of Revelations, we are not in love with him like we used to be. But to come back and do your first works, and your first works were that you were in love with God. We were in love with him, and our hearts burned for him. That's the kindling of the Lord. That's that burning uh, uh, that Jesus Christ lit when he baptized us with the Spirit and with fire. We belong to Christ, and we are to keep ourselves in love with him. Keep your
yourselves in the love of God and unspotted from this world. Start eating the flesh of Jesus Christ. This word, this word that became flesh, these, these words on these Bible pages, they are his flesh and we eat it and we drink it night and day. Anytime we get the chance, get the word in your face. Thank God him because he is good <laughs> all the time. And just in case somebody wants to eat the pages of the Bible, I didn't say that. Metaphorically speaking, these words become life to us. They raise up off the page and they find their way into our hearts. They rewrite the script of our mind, and I don't mean brainwashing. None of that. See, the word is the truth. It reveals the nature and the knowledge of God. And it, it, this, this is what it does. It reveals the knowledge of God and the more of this that we eat, the more the nature of the Father is produced in our whole being. And we can show that the Lord is God. I mean the true God. In John chapter 17, what is everlasting life is knowing God, is knowing the Son that He sent into this world, is knowing, having not, not just a, a knowledge of Him, but it's a growing knowledge. It's a knowledge that does not stop. You're just constantly fascinated. And I would tell you today, truly be in love with Him. Get on your knees and worship Him because He truly is the living God who loves us and has given us life and life more abundantly, life and peace. He's given us a grace that, uh, oh Lord, I, I pray for myself to really grab hold of what Jesus has done for us. When he went into the grave, got up from the grave and ascended on high. He ascended and is seated, seated next to the Father in his right hand. And he says that whatever we ask for in his name, it would, it would be given to us. But it's because we have this alive relationship with the living God. We know that He is. We understand that He rewards those who diligently seek Him. It's like, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all His righteousness. That means His way of doing things. And He will supply the need. He will direct our steps because our mind is stayed on Him. Added that I just put some more in there, but that's what he's going to do. We are in him and he's in us. We he is our life. He transforms our understanding so that we can walk in true peace and confidence without fear. We can be the vessels of his use and glorify him even more. He is beautiful is wonderful. This grace that he's given us, if we abide in Christ and the word abide in us, John chapter 15, we can ask for what we need in this life and he will give it to us. We're his workmanship created in Christ Jesus, the workmanship of God created in Christ Jesus. And he wants to bless us with the spiritual blessings that he's given us because it points all fingers to him. It gives him all the glory and it gives him all the praise. This is our Abba. And he loves us. And this is Pastor Cheryl Jackson. I get the word in your face international. Get the word in your face and love him. Love him because he is who he is. And he's more, more than enough. He really does fill your heart and mind with such a constant joy. The joy is not a joy like in this earth. The peace is not a peace like in this earth where we have to bear the strain of making peace. and We have to bear the strain of, of, of having this joy. We've got to fight to have it. We've got to, you know, lie, cheat, and steal to have some joy. That's not joy. you got to feel sorry for somebody in order to have mercy. I'm glad that God, our Father, I'm glad that they looked on us and they saw that we needed help. I'm glad that he pitied us the way that he did. I'm so glad he did. And I pray for 
for somebody to see this from my perspective and understand what the true what God our Father, what He's really done for us in sending His Son and giving us, us His Spirit and by opening up this way of grace if we only could understand it. So be still and know that He's God today. Trust Him with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all of your strength because He loves you. He wants to clean your house today. He wants to clean it. So let him have your temple. That's your physical body. That's your soul. And that's your, your, oh, that's your, your, it's all of you. Remember, you're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. He's blowing his breath upon you. He's wiping you off. He's, he's brushing off your shoulders. Praise the Lord and get the word in your face. Have a great day. Bye-bye. And he wants to build his house in you.